Hey everybody, welcome to Nation. My name is Jersey and you are here at WCR Nation. What's up? If this is your first time watching or listening, what's going on? I really genuinely appreciate you checking it out. Hopefully it does not suck and you want to go back and watch or listen to some of the previous episodes. This marks episode number 52, once a week podcast. That's one year, man, if you're not good at the maths. One year of this podcast, um, we've asked and uh, I believe we're going to be doing another year of this coming out every Friday. So, awesome news and it's all because of you guys who watch and listen and the ones who buy through me, the elite, the people who put their orders in through me. Um, it's because of you guys that I get to keep doing the show. So, if you are part of the nation somebody who watches every single week, most importantly gives that thumbs up so I know you guys are actually watching and enjoying it. And you comment, even share. People share this stuff. I love it. Uh, you are one of the nation. One of the cool kids. You are one of the nation. And I appreciate it. It's because of you. Like I said, I get to do the show. And um, I genuinely appreciate you guys watching and conversing and talking about it and everything. It's just genuinely awesome. Uh, and if, like I said, you are one of the elite, somebody who puts their orders in through me, it is because of you that I get to have Lucky Charms uh, real name brand cereal sometimes as opposed to the Magic uh, magic Shape cereal that's, uh, you know, the lower end brand. It's because of you that I get to live and pay bills. So thank you very much. And I am a sales rep for Window Cleaning Resource. Like I say every week, if you want to buy your supplies through me, if you just want to be like, what's up, man, I want you to get credit for it. I love it. I love it. I appreciate it so much. My number, 862-312-2026. I genuinely, guys, um, it's awesome. I appreciate it. I get texts every day saying, hey, everything's in my cart. You can go and shop any time of day or night. Keep stuff in your cart over a week or whatever. And when you're finally done, shoot me a text at 862-312-2026. And uh, be like, hey, it's ready to go in. And uh, we'll go from there. So I appreciate it. Either way, thank you for checking us out. Now, um, I want to talk real quickly about the huge convention. I'm going to push this every single week. And I literally, if you haven't got your tickets yet, what are you waiting for? It's freaking awesome. And it's coming up August 23rd and 24th. This year, 2018, it's in Atlanta. It is at the uh, Atlanta Mar Marriott Marquis. It is going to be awesome. Now, just because it's the 23rd and 24th, doesn't mean you don't want to come in like a couple days early. The networking side of it is bigger than anything you've ever done for your business. I'm telling you right now. The stuff I've learned just sitting at a bar with somebody or a restaurant or in a lobby or something. And somebody says something and you go, wait, what? Tell me about that again. So how didn't I think of that? It is absolutely mind-blowing. So get your tickets. They are selling ridiculously fast uh, this year. It way surpassed last year this time is so far the uh, busiest that it's ever been. Um, so get that. Uh, all the vendors for the trade show, that sold out like weeks ago. That's crazy. Crazy. They're trying to like open up more space. It's Anyway, it's awesome. Go to it and then you'll never miss another one, I promise. It is the biggest in the world from what I've been told. I don't know if there's actual stats on that, but... I mean, this year, we could see upwards of a 1,000 contractors there. That's just a number I pulled out of my butt. But <laughs> you could definitely get there. We've been really close uh, past previous years, um, and the way that it's tracking this year could be amazing. But anyway, check it out, and I will see you there. I'll be there. Luke will be there. Uh, Luke, the window cleaner. I don't know if you've heard of him. Uh, Jordy is going to be there. Um, Tradman is not going to be there, but Steve-O will be. Fluff will be. All the guys that you see watch videos here, WCR, the creators, they're all going to be there. Plus, Mr. John Lee, he'll be there. And Alex, uh, Alice Lamborghinis, if you know him, he'll be there. You could say what's up. And uh, Chris, he'll be there. You won't see him because he's like a ghost. But uh, Chrissy Lambo will be there, so... Yeah, anyway, come. That's all I got to say about that. I'll hark on you next week about it, but it's awesome. Do it. It's amazing. I want to give shout outs to Tommy. First off, what up, man? Tommy, uh, Wes. Uh, what up, Wes? Wes is super cool, dude. I'm super excited to see him again 
in uh, Atlanta. Hopefully we get to hang out. Um, and the window cleanse, Jordy. If you haven't checked his YouTube channel out, uh, it is the window cleanse. Uh, Jordy is awesome. He makes some um, uh, amazing videos. But either way, check him out. He is awesome also. And speaking of creators, I'm going to be doing a Facebook Live with Fluff probably this week. So uh, if you're listening to this the Friday it comes out this week, um, we're going to be doing a Facebook Live. Ask Fluff anything, and it's going to be amazing. So check that out. All right, so let's get into the show. Uh, this week, we're actually talking about subcontracting. Now, I'm not talking about having your employees as subcontractors. I'm talking about you subcontracting work out or getting subcontracted work to you. Now, what does subcontracting work mean? What does that mean? People are giving me work? What? Yeah, let me give you an example. So, uh, if I have a job that is in the next city over, it happens to be tagged on with a bunch of other work that I do in the cities I do my services in, and there's one over there, I may subcontract that job to somebody. Now, what that means is I'm giving it to another window cleaning company, taking a piece off of it, and paying that company a portion of it to do it. Now, if you're subcontracting work out, you're not getting rich. If you're subcontracting work in, you're not getting rich. But it's very, very, very useful. Um, I do a lot of subcontracting work in, um, and I don't do as much subcontracting work out. And the reason is is I don't have a lot of stuff that comes in outside of uh, our area. But I have some really good relationships with guys that are close to me that sub work to me, and uh, it's awesome. So basically what happens is every single month on certain contracts, everybody's different, but you get it, the work order comes to you saying, hey, I don't even do really work orders anymore because I sub stuff so long. But usually when it starts, you get a work order that says this work needs to be done at this certain uh, week. Get it done. Uh, have them sign off on it and give it to me. And then what happens is you get a, a check in the mail from them or direct pay or however you do that. Just like always. But it is very, very awesome because you don't have to sell that job. Now, with subcontracting... In general, you go, okay, there can't be that many things that are crazy about subcontracting, right? There can't be that much to talk about, but there really, really is. If you think about it, you're trusting a competitor with your work. So there's a lot that goes into it. You have to build a building rapport is huge with the other con the other company because they have to do work that is good enough for you. Uh, it doesn't make you look bad. And if it's tagged on with, say you do 10 locations, but that 11th and 12th one, you know, are out of your area, it doesn't make sense to go do those. If you sub it to somebody and they suck, they're going to ruin the, all of them for you. You're going to lose 10 accounts for it. So you have to really know what you're doing and who you're dealing with. Um, and you have to have an open dialogue with them. I mean, um, I have had it before where contracts that we've done for other people uh, my guy forgot a window or two windows or whatever. He would call and be like, Hey, what is going on? This has got, and then you go above and beyond to make sure that it gets fixed because you know that their name is on the line. Your work is on the line and your relationship is on the line with subcontracting. It is a dance between you and the other company. Um, another version of it is not a window cleaning company to window cleaning company, but it is a window cleaning company that does work for a janitorial company um, and uh, some of you may know that uh, my company does janitorial also um, and that's a very hard one because some people want you to do a non-compete I personally won't sign one uh, a because if you're a window cleaning company and you don't want me to do window cleaning that kind of isn't a thing I'm not gonna sign anything saying I'm not gonna window clean because that's what I do uh, and if a janitorial company says the same thing about janitorial, I also do janitorial. Now, the big, big, big taboo, and you are a piece of garbage if you do this. Sorry. But if you have that contract or that's your subbed work from somebody and you try to sell them to get them to give it to you direct, like, that's awful. That is the most undercutted thing that anybody can do in our industry. I really, really dislike it. I'm sorry if you do it. Uh, but yeah, that's awful. Don't do that. And 
I've had uh, times where the company that I've done work for, uh, or I'm sorry, the, the company that I was actually cleaning their windows that I did work for somebody else had come to me and said, hey, we're not happy with this other company. We want to switch to you. Um, there's, what do you do? You know, do you take all the work? Uh, I don't. What I say is I'm working with that subcontracting company, um, but if the contract ends, um, then we can revisit it. But, you know, as of right now, I can't do any work directly for you. I have to do it through them. And that's so they get their cut. They build their portfolio. Uh, it's theirs. It's not yours. It's kind of the right thing to do. It's that's the taboo to, to, to take the work. Don't be an a-hole and take it. So in this exact incident that I've had that happen, I went back to the company, said the same thing. Hey, I'm sorry. I just can't do work directly for you because I'm working with them. It's a huge conflict for us. Um, you know, we stand really on our integrity side of things. I'd love to help you out, but the contract stands with them. Um, I went back to them as soon as I was done on that phone and said, hey, I want to give you the heads up. Don't, I mean, you don't want to seem like you're playing both sides because if the contract does get dropped, um, you know, they may not go with you, but I, I go to them. That's where my loyalty is, is with that company that's subbing you. And I said, hey, they're not happy with your work. They wanted to give me all of that work. I told them, no, that's not what I do, but I want to give you the heads up. And now it's on them to go, oh, crap. I'm going to lose this. I need to bust a hump to try to get this thing rectified and figure out what's going on. And that also builds a huge rapport between you and the company who's subbing you work. Um, that's what the name of the game is. All this stuff, we talk about the huge convention and everything else. It's all networking. It is all networking. And if you network with a company that's subbing you work, you're building a huge, hugely great relationship. I've given equipment to people to use, get them out of a bind. I've gotten equipment from people. Uh, it's 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 more invaluable to be friends with competition. We've done an episode on competition, so you can go back, watch, listen to that. But it's a huge, huge thing to be able to, um, you know, build that rapport. So make sure that you do it, and make sure they know you're on their side. But how do you get them? How do you get these guys to sub you work? Well, what I do, and again, talk to talking about competitors in general, is I always call them and say, hey, this is Jersey calling from XYZ uh, Window Cleaning. Hey, I just wanted to give you a call and say hi, introduce myself. Uh, we're up the street, you know. Uh, we're in the same neighborhood. I'd love to go out to coffee sometime and just, you know, uh, talk about shop and life and everything else. And just wanted to introduce myself. Usually, people go, ah, no, 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 no. But... You can certainly get in that way. Now, um, the other thing that I'll say in that same when I'm trying to introduce myself to people or meet them, I always say, hey, if you ever need any help, now this is not in your area either. Usually when you're in your area, there's a joint tag-along subbing we'll talk about in a second. But outside your area, if you're ever at one of these conferences and you meet somebody and they go, oh, yeah, I'm right here. Oh, yeah, we, are. we don't service it right outside of our area. That right there is the ticket for both of you. Dude, if you ever get anything in my area, man, sub it. Send it out my way and, and uh, you know, you'll make your cut on it. We'll uh, keep them happy, do an awesome job, and we'll do the same for you. I'd love to have somebody I can rely on. And it builds that rapport. Now you're building a network, right? It is um, pretty awesome. But getting them from somebody, that's the hard part. Cleaning companies, that part is easier. There's a lot of work that you can get subbed. Realtors, they're not subbing you work, right? Because they just want to give it to you to do the work. I don't, you know, they can't even sometimes get cutbacks um, because of legalities and, and whatever. But with cleaning companies, I call probably every two months, I'll call the cleaning companies. Hey, it's Jersey calling from XYZ. Uh, just catching up with you. Um, we do window cleaning and I would love to do your window cleaning for you. Um, Get any of the work that you guys just don't want to take on. You know, we can tailor it exactly to you. And give them the speech. Give them the elevator and tell them why they should pick you. But what that does is let them know that you're interested in work. Cleaning companies are notorious for not doing windows. Why? As much as windows, we talk about this. Windows are simple and anybody can do windows. Not anybody can do it fast, make money at it and uh, do it efficiently and do a good job, right? It's very hard to kind of do a good job. And cleaning people know that. Janitors, uh, maid services, and things like that. Those people, 
that do that know that they're good at everything else but Windows. Sometimes they do it, most times they don't. And if you call them and let them know, they want to sub you that work because guess what? They do the Joneses' house. They do the cleaning every week. They don't want to lose that because they don't do Windows. They go, oh, Mrs. Jones, hey, I have a company I recommend and uh, they'll do great work and uh, they will do the Windows for X amount. And what happens is now uh, Stacy with uh, XYZ Maid Service, right, she is going to get a cut of that money. Now, how that all works, like I said, is she'll say, oh, they'll do it. You quote it and say, okay, that job is going to be, this is how I do it at least. Uh, that job is going to be $199, uh, but for you, uh, $175, um, and then $199 is the price you'll tell them. Now, how that works is you took a little less because you don't have to deal with it. They just shoot you the work, right? And you're building the rapport, and they make their cut, right? So now the work that they're going to do, they're going to try to sell windows on every job because they're like, man, every time they do windows, I get $25 or whatever the price is, free money. That's great, right? What if they make 25 bucks an hour? They're getting free hours worth of work because you did the work. It's really, really good for both of you. So do that, set it up that way, and then you're still competitive. If you say it's going to be 199, you tell the maid service, Stacy over at XYZ, you tell her, you say, hey, it's going to be 199. And she goes, oh, okay. Uh, so they're going to do your windows for 225. It's going to be more than what normally is charged, right? Because the other cleaning companies, if they've gotten other quotes, are probably maybe comparable to you at that one ninety nine. So why not take a little bit off? Because you're not marketing. It costs you no money to get the customer. It keeps you costs you no money to get the customer coming back every quarter, every six months, year. It's worth doing. So that's how you get them on, on the residential side. Now, route work is what we talked about earlier. Rut work is more common because, as we know, I love rut work, and I've told you that. I love rut work. But with that being said, we don't make as much in rut work, especially when you're talking about not a rut. You're talking about one job. You may be a $10 job. You may be a $20 job. That's once every month. Well, I'm not driving an hour out of my range to go do that unless I'm building a route around it. Now, if you have that one $20 job an hour away and you build a route and sell the whole complex, well, then it makes sense to maybe go out there. But still, I'm going to sub that out or get it subbed from somebody, and this is how the same thing goes. Is a smaller chunk, but the same thing. They do the route work. Okay, that job is a $25 job. Uh, it's going to be 20 bucks. We'll do it, and they make the $5 for the paperwork side of it. They're not making any money, right? In that case, they're keeping the rest of the customers happy. Um, they are uh, building rapport with you. You're building rapport with them. It is in your route. It will help you make more money on everything else that's around there because you do that one job, right? Because you have more uh, stops uh, or more jobs on the one stop. So it's hugely, hugely beneficial. Now, when it all comes back to how they get paid, that all comes directly from them. Uh, with commercial, now let me let me step back. If you have a job, one job, and it's not part of like a 20 store thing that one of them's out of the way. If you just have one, they called you and they're an hour away, I will give that to somebody else. I'm not going to deal with it. I'm not going to deal with the headache of sending the invoices, making sure they're happy, blah, blah, blah. It's not worth it. I'll give that. I'll call the same people I sub to and be like, hey, I got a job out there. They want me to bid it. Uh, I'm going to give you the contact information, right? That's just giving work. That's, again, hugely beneficial um but i'm not going to sub one job out the only time i'm going to sub work is if i have a lot of other jobs that i want to sub uh, or keep happy that one job just didn't make me any money um now with commercial remember we got residential route commercial those are the big ones commercial that is different because commercial so large usually there's usually commas in commercial projects it makes sense for people to drive a little out of the way. Now, if I told you that if you and one helper or two techs or whatever could go out to a building and make $2,500 in a day, but you have to drive an hour, hour and a half each way, would you do it? Well, yeah, you'd do it because that's still great money for the day. Um, then you're not subbing it. But what you might do is maybe it's just you. Maybe... You just got a job that's 
$2,500, $5,000, whatever it is, you got a job and you don't have the guys, but you know the guy that you do sub work is in that area. You call him up and say, hey, John at X, Y, Y, <laughs> window clean. I'm running out of names, sorry. Um, hey, I got a job out there and it is huge and I want you to do a tag along sub with me. Now what that means is that you're gonna be working and they're gonna be working on the same job at the same time. Now, what that is, is that the job may still be yours. You keep contact information, you keep all that. But now they're working with you, you're going to sub them at almost the same as you have. Now, a 60-40 split is usually pretty typical. That extra 10%, now that is for keeping the customer happy, dealing with the customer, doing blah, blah, blah. The other guy just shows up. If he's got the time, yeah, heck yeah, I'll go over summer. You got a $4,000 uh, you know, job and I could make uh, f- you know, 40% of that. Well, yeah, no kidding, I'm going to do that. You know, $1,600 to uh, show up somewhere and do some work is really, really good. And now you got somebody who knows what they're doing and they're going to take pride in their work because it's still them and what they do. Now, how that works is the same thing. Is that they're not getting a piece of it. You're both going there. You both can talk and, you know, shoot the shit the whole day. Uh, talk. It's it's awesome. How I always do it, if we do sub, my guys, usually in their large projects, we get them lunch. Um whatever's close we'll kind of i'll show up on a job site buy them lunch whatever if the sub's there i do that too uh basically i treat them as like one of my guys you know not not that way but you know what i'm saying i want to make sure that they're super happy and just appreciative that they're helping me out because they're not doing something that they're supposed to be doing on their schedule if they can help you so same thing goes if it comes to you and somebody says that making room for it and opening a day you know if there's enough out there rescheduling it it's it's awesome Subbing is really good. Now you get your benefit of having multiple employees without having multiple employees. You're giving up more money to have somebody, but listen, you're getting somebody that you don't need to bring on full time. It's just for the one job. They know what they're doing and they do a great job at it. You don't have to train them. You don't have to do anything. They just show up. They have their own equipment, right? There's so many more benefits to it than trying to hire somebody for that one project just because you're greedy. It doesn't necessarily make sense. That's where a tag along sub comes into play. Um, I dig those ones. Those are like my favorite ones because not only that, I get to have, uh, get to hang out with these guys for a day or for a good chunk of a day or a couple days. And, uh, I love it. I mean, like I said, networking is, is more important than anything else you do for your business. Uh, as far as just growing a solid foundation, it's networking. So doing that allows you to talk with these guys. It's fun. It's, it's just a good time. You get, just get to hang out. Also, that's why you go to the huge convention because, you know, same thing. So back to getting paid. When you get paid, what happens is usually what I do, and this is the part I'm going to get a little flack on, but I want to be, I want to be as cordial as I can with these guys, right? I always say when you get paid, I get paid. Now, on the more reoccurring ones, that's not how it works. Uh, I get paid regularly just because it's reoccurring anyway. But like on a big project or a single project or something like that, hey, when you get paid, I get paid, right? The downside is, is that if they get screwed, which does not happen, it's never happened to me, but if it did ever happen, you got to figure out what to do at that point. You know, yes, you did the work. Yes, they did the work. Like, where are you kind of in the process? Uh, What You deal with that. That's on you. That's not on me. I'm not going to tell you how to do that. But that is how we do projects. Now, if you are in Net30, talk about that in the beginning. What are are the terms on that project you need to tag along with? Uh, They're 30 or they're 60 or they're 90. Ooh, 90 is a little long. Is there any way that we could get, uh, you know, Net30? Uh, You know, sometimes you can work that out with them. Uh, Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think that'll be a problem. Sure, cool. Okay. Sometimes I've had them where uh, as soon as you do the job, when you're done, I cut you check, shoot it out. It's just whatever they want to do. But be cordial. Don't demand the money because this is, again, we're building a relationship with something. There's more important things than the money itself. So when you get paid on the big one, you get your check and it comes directly from that company. Now, with that being said, you may, more than likely, be getting a 1099 from them. Now, all that means... Again, I'm not getting into legalities because I don't know, you know, uh, 
anything on legalities, and I'm not a lawyer or a tax accountant or anything. But if you get a 1099 MISC form, that just means that you made over X amount with them. They send you a form. They send that into the government saying that they paid that. Now, why they do that? Not only are you claiming it because it was a job, you're still going to be running it through your accounting software, QuickBooks or whatever. But when they do that, it's because if I'm getting paid $10,000 for a job, but I'm sending you 4000 of it, I'm not going to pay taxes and show income on that extra 4000 I got to claim that as an expense because I paid that out. So that's how that works. I usually, everybody I sub for get 1099s from. It's absolutely fine because I'm claiming it as uh, income anyway, so that doesn't anything. But that's how they pay it, and that's how you as a sub don't get hit with the whole charge because you paid somebody. It's just like having an employee out there that made that money. They're not employees. They don't wear your shirt. They don't wear your use your gear. They don't. They have to come there when they, the, it's not anything like that. Don't ever think that they're your employee at that point. They're always subbing work. Their company is doing work for your company. That's how subs work. Um, so go that route. Be legal on it. But it's amazing. Do it, and uh, that's how you build hugely, hugely, um, you know, big rapport. But remember that account. If they're subbing work to you, is their account treated as so? It's a benefit that they allow you to do work for them. And the same thing, if you're giving work to somebody else, it's your account. Now that is where the trust, right? You're giving somebody work that's still yours. You need to trust them. That's where the rapport comes in. So go out there and you know, uh, share and uh, sub work and take work. Uh, you know, sub work for people. It's it's awesome. Do it and uh, build a rapport, and go to the huge convention, August 23rd and 24th, and even more importantly, if you're still listening, and you want 5% off of your order, let me know the code this week for 5% off. If you put your order through me, not anybody else, only through me, uh, this week is the huge convention. That's the code this week, the huge convention. All you got to do is put your order in through me, 862-312-2026. And I'm telling you, you can put everything in your cart. Uh, I have a lot of people do that. Shop, save it to your cart as you're doing it. Make sure you're logged in. That saves it. And then just text me at some point and be like, hey, I'm ready to put it in, and we'll go from there. I even keep cards on file for a lot of people. Uh, that way they can do the exact same thing. Uh, hey, send me a, you know, a gross of uh, rubber and 36 or whatever. And then they don't even need to do anything else. I go, okay, great, thanks, Jane Doe, and I shoot it out. It's awesome. So do that. Your code this week, save 5%. Order a pure water system. Order uh, one handle, whatever you want. Do it, and let me put the order in for you. Like I said, appreciate that. Go to the huge convention and just go out there and be awesome. And until next week, be epic. Go sub, make some networking uh, connections, and be awesome.